If you make less than $225,000 a year, you cannot afford to buy a home in Toronto. At least that's what this article says. And let's go through some of these and, and explain kind of where they're getting these numbers at. Now, I'm Michael Luzes. I'm a realtor in the greater Toronto area. And first off, I wanna start by saying, if you do make less than $225,000 a year, yes, you can buy a home in Toronto. This article is just something we're gonna go through. We're gonna talk about where they came up with this number. Before we get started, hit that like and subscribe button. I'd love to reach more people like you that are trying to educate yourself in the market. So let's jump right to it here. And this article is from Stories and we'll relate to Rate Hub and we'll go through a couple different options of where these numbers came up with. Now, I do wanna start this by saying I am not a mortgage broker. I'm not a licensed mortgage broker, so if you do want to find out exactly what you can afford on your income, definitely contact a mortgage broker and find out what that number looks like for you. Now, if we do go through this article, it says make less than 225K question mark. You can't afford to buy a home in Toronto. Very scary article, huge headline, but where they're getting this, we'll see. If you're in the market to buy a home in the pricey city of Toronto and Vancouver, you'll, you'll need to be making well over 200K. And this is according to new data from ratehub.ca, where you'll need to earn a cool 220K to purchase a home in Toronto and Vancouver with a 20% down payment. That is, unless you're among the lucky set with access to the bank of mom and dad. Now, RateHub says it used March 2022 and June 2022 real estate data to make the calculations. The sort of good news for first time home buyers looking to get into the market in spots like Toronto, Vancouver, Winnipeg, Ottawa and Hamilton is that prices have softened in recent months following a dramatic red hot two year run inspired by the pandemic. With that said, perpetually climbing interest rates and stress test rates in response to soaring inflation will make home ownership unattainable for many young Canadians. So let's talk about this a little bit. And where they're starting at is that the average price in Toronto, and we're talking greater Toronto area, came in in the 1.2 millions. As a rule of thumb, and I've always heard this from all the mortgage brokers that I know and I've worked with, typically you get approved for four to five times your income. And again, I'm not a mortgage broker, and if you do wanna find out your exact borrowing power, contact one and figure that number out. Now, when they say to buy a home in Toronto, home is such a subjective word. If you live in a condo and you own it and you live there, that is your home. And I can certainly tell you that there are many condos in the city of Toronto that are much, much cheaper than $1.2 million. This home, dream in toronto and they're referring to typically detached houses and i don't know many people who can just walk off the street and buy a detached house at the first at bat let's go through this article a little bit more and see where these numbers are coming from they do show some good charts on rate hub i will also go on rate hub to kind of plug in some numbers and we'll see if the affordability has changed that much even though prices have come down so let's slide down here and let's see where they're getting these numbers from now if we zoom in here, we can see that in Toronto, the average home price back in March 22 was $1.335 million. The mortgage amount needed would be $1,068,000. This is, since it's over a million dollars, you will have to put down 20%. And your income required to qualify for that number would have been $210,750. dollars Now, uh, this is using the June numbers, and you can see here the Average home price back in June was 1,200,000. Your mortgage amount would be 963. Again, it's over a million dollars. You'll have to put down the 20%. And to qualify for that at these current rates, you'll need to make $226,500 of household income. Now the change required in income to buy a home, if you're buying the average home price in Toronto would be an extra 15,000 $750. So as we can see there, the amount of income needed to qualify at these prices has have actually gone up, even though prices have gone down quite a good amount in that time. 
Now, sales have definitely dropped significantly. We've definitely seen less and less properties transacting over the last couple of months. So if we go down here a little bit further, if we go to where James Laird, the co-CEO of RateHub.ca, president of Kenwise Mortgage Lender, says generally for every 1% that the stress test increases, household qualifies for about 10% less mortgage. Remember, the stress test is put in place to help buffer a rising interest rate scenario which we have been in now for the last few months and will probably continue into September at least that's what the consensus says so let's flip forward to this article from May 2022 and it actually says the same thing that this article that just came out in July says so more than 220,000 income needed to buy a home in Toronto Vancouver just like the one we just spoke about in stories and then Here's what we should go through here. I'm on Rate Hub here. This is a very generic uh, plug in the numbers and kind of get a visual of what something would cost you every month. Now, I do recommend reaching out to Mortgage Broker to get your exact numbers because this doesn't always tell the exact story. So, talk to your mortgage broker, see what kind of rates are out there. I'm just going to put in a couple numbers. So, if we put in a million dollars here, and hit go and and at a million dollars you do have to put down 20 percent and your down payment will be two hundred thousand dollars mortgage remaining will be eight hundred thousand dollars there is no mortgage insurance if you do put down the 20 percent now amortization we're going to select 25 years and let's go with the rate from back in basically february and as we can see that monthly cost would be around 35 or 3600 dollars a month now prices have come down and let's see let's see exactly what that would have to go down to at today's current interest rates so if we put in an eight hundred thousand dollar purchase price and we use the we'll use the 20 percent over here so one hundred sixty thousand dollar down payment so yes your down payment is forty thousand dollars less on eight hundred thousand versus a million uh, your remaining mortgage, 640000 25 years. We're going to switch this rate to, let's go 5% because that's what we keep hearing. And you can see the monthly cost on an $800,000 mortgage at 5% is 37 dollars It's actually more than purchasing that property at a million dollars with a 2.5% interest rate. Now, again, these numbers are just for ballpark ideas and definitely reach out to your mortgage broker to get an exact amount of what this would cost. One thing's for sure is that we have seen prices come down in the last few months. We've seen properties sitting on the market a little bit longer and it does present pretty good opportunities for buyers right now who have maybe been waiting on the sidelines and trying to wait for those prices to come down. Maybe they haven't saved up that extra down payment and they have an amount right now that could get them into the market. Now, before everyone tries to roast me on YouTube that it's a horrible time to buy, we do have to remember that purchasing a home is a home. It's not always about purchasing your dream house from day one. If you are comparing purchasing right now to renting and rental prices have been skyrocketing over the last little while and you're saying, you know what, I'd rather just own my property than pay someone else's mortgage down, this might be a time where you can go and shop around and take your time to try to find a good deal out there and there are good deals out there we've been seeing prices drop and price and properties sitting and that that usually becomes a good time for someone looking to purchase to take your time to go in do your due diligence you can add in conditions again which all that stuff is great we don't know what that crystal ball is we have been seeing more and more action on properties over the last probably two to three weeks, mostly two weeks. Remember, we are in the dead of summer, and for most people, at least everybody I know, they are in Europe. I'm a little bit jealous of them. I do miss traveling to Europe uh, every year. So there you have it. I do think that sometimes these articles and news articles make everything seem so daunting, like making $225,000 a year that you can't afford your home is not a fair statement. There are many great properties that you do not need to be making that kind of money to purchase right now. I'm Michael Luzes. If you enjoyed this video, hit that like and subscribe button, book into my calendar if you want to chat about real estate, and follow me on all social media at Mike Luzes Real Estate.